Okay, here we go. It's 2020, and every two years I make the case against states pushing up their minimum wage higher. This is the case of woke people, but woke is idiotic. The case, fortunately, is working. The majority of states have held the line against these unreasonable increases. Unreasoned is probably an even better word. Increases are being based on feelings. Let's base them on reason, and rather than every two years, I wish conservatives would be speaking out every two weeks so it could be halted. Today, I make the case in terms of good and evil. Woke people feel they are good and are doing good. In the case of high or forcing employers to put on a high minimum wage, they are doing evil. 1.75 million Americans will be kept from jobs if all states went to that $15 minimum wage. This is not coming from a conservative think tank. It is coming from a congressional office, an office controlled by Democrats. So in the name of putting a few more dollars in the pockets of some, look what the forced high wage does. Remember, the sum are people who don't deserve those dollars in the first place. In the marketplace, if they were good employees, they'd be making that now. So, this artificiality then whacks the job from 1.75 million others. And it's not just a few dollars. It's 100% of their income. That's what happens when you go from a $7, $8, $9 an hour job to zero. No income. More importantly, it's taking away opportunity. The first job, which is for many kids that $7.25 an hour, $8 an hour job, is a stepping stone. How important is it? It's a stepping stone to a career. Ask any college-educated intern, not paid, who already has some good practical skills, already has some, why is he working for free? And he almost certainly will tell you, it is a career opportunity. The wage that I'm foregoing is almost irrelevant. <laughs> Some kids actually pay to get on a good path. The Congressional PAGE program, it was eliminated in 2011, but parents paid a good amount of money to have their kids working like 30 hours a week for staffers on Capitol Hill. They paid about $10,000 per semester to give their kids the privilege of working. And it was, to some extent, a privilege. Now, the program ended, but there's still unpaid interns. Over 80% of the Senate pays its interns zero. A few of them, the remaining, um, pay a stipend. Guess what? The stipend is below the minimum wage. How do these progressives feel about them, these, at times, very progressive Senate and House leaders? To her credit, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez is famously paying her staffers $15 an hour. So give some applause that she's being stand-up. Now, we recognize that she's not paying that $15 an hour's wage out of her pocket. It is coming from a congressional budget that you and I pay for. But liberals don't tend to fathom that, do they? Please fathom this. Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, your $15 per hour minimum, because you have a limited budget, is preventing you from hiring some other people. Right? If it were $5 an hour, you could give jobs to three times as many people. And they're good people who would probably be very good, effective staffers. And you know what? They're probably, some of them, even more needy people. They need the job more than your privileged suburban kid who might be on your staff now. So why don't you just change your policy and hire Everyone, especially those with needs, who comes to your door until the budget runs out, okay? 
I know that you and other progressives would like to not even use $15, but have that as a stepping stone to a living wage. Now that helps the more needy people who are underpaid right now. Um, if you know, it's very silly because the person who has very high expenses is then paid more for the same work. It means people who take care of themselves worse. They choose outside extracurricular activities like drinking, like th those who want to take extra vacations. They have higher costs of living. So now hearing that, many progressives revert to the $15 an hour wage. Now it is a stepping stone. Hey, if $15 an hour is so good that we need to mandate it on every single employer so that it's good, why not $150 an hour, right? If 15 is good, let's pay 10 times that as a minimum. That usually stops progressives, even the math challenge. But in case it doesn't, please try this with your progressive friends. The most successful economy in Europe is Switzerland. Their average wage exceeds $34 an hour. Do you know what their minimum wage is? Minimum. It's zero. There is no minimum wage in Switzerland. People's talents have them commanding very high and medium high, but nobody's really, really at the bottom, bottom level because of the free market. Same is true in Singapore, same was true in Hong Kong up until 2012, and then they wrongly instituted a minimum wage. Now, a zero wage sounds mean, but it's very enlightened, and it maximizes employment. It also maximizes the skills that many people need. Now, progressives, they try to improve people's skills through dead-end government job training programs. Conservatives say the best social program is a job, and their policies actually maximize the people who can get jobs, whether those are stepladder jobs or well-paying from right off the start. That is so beneficial. Conservatives are both theoretically and practically the more caring group compared to progressives. I will finish by saying that conservative methods get progressives almost everything they want, and they do it better. We conservatives want tolerance. We conservatives want better schools. We conservatives want to help the poor. Liberals, by contrast, they condescend to the poor, and long term, they leave them helpless. I'm Mark Stewart, hoping that progressives will rethink some of these policies.